gosh. We don't want to make her nervous. She's just a little girl, so. Oh dear God. I pray she likes me. about some of the most intimidating people that I've ever met and how our relationships started with me having great fear of them and how they've wound up. One that comes to mind is incredibly um, dear to my heart. Her name is Chili. Um, this little girl, I... <laughs> I met her when she was seven years old, and she came down to me from the mountains by an aid worker who worked um, up in the, uh, the mountaintops of Haiti. I got a phone call while I was in Aspen, Colorado from an aid worker, and she said, hey, I know that you take handicapped children, and could you just take one more? I need to tell you about this little girl. Chili lives in a lean-to, with her grandfather and four other children who uh, are all taken care of by her grandfather. But Chili is a little bit slow and we think she might have cerebral palsy and therefore handicapped. And in Haiti, in that area, she was considered something called a coco bay. Um, a coco bay is something less than human. That's what it means. So I thought about it and you know, we have 125 children already. Half of them are handicapped and it's, it's very, very hard to take care of children in the capacity that we want to take care of them uh, in such great volume. So taking another child in that would be with us for life as a family member was not something that I took lightly because every child we really want them to be part of the family. But how in the world are you going to say, no to a little girl knowing that she's probably being ill-treated because of her disabilities. And lo and behold, I found out that she had been locked in this shack for years, um, never had clothing, and I don't know if she'd ever been carefully and gently bathed. I do know that when I got her, she had so many scars on her body, and I, I eventually found out that she was hit um, often by her grandfather and abused in ways that I really don't know. So when I started praying about it, thinking about it, um, thinking it all the way through to this little girl is going to grow up and she'll probably you know, need to stay with us because of her disabilities for the rest of her life, I had a flashback to when I was eight and I was considered a little slow. Um, my parents told me later, uh, when in my late 40s, that they thought that I had a mental disability when I was little. Um, I didn't. I was traumatized because of my grandfather's abuse. So it's like, of course I'm gonna take this little girl. She's close to my age. She's being abused by her grandfather. Of course I'm gonna take this little girl. But then I thought, I gotta go to Haiti. I want her, when she comes, to live with us. I want her to see me first. Because I remember how scared I was when I got put in my first foster home. Will they like me? Will they take care of me? Will they put me out uh, if I do something bad? Uh, I was terrified. So I flew to Haiti and I waited. And I'll never forget that hour before she got there. I knew I was getting calls knowing you know, what her uh, estimated time of arrival was. And I started getting nervous. I, ca I couldn't believe how absolutely nervous I was. It was like me, in my head, I was meeting Susie as a little girl for the first time. Very, very, very nerve-wracking. I'm like, what would I say to myself if I met myself when I was eight? And eight years old is the exact time of my rescue. And I was meeting my rescuer. So my grandfather raped me, and I 
got rescued by a foster family eventually. I wasn't mentally ill, but after years of abuse, you realize you're not like anybody else and you stop talking. So this little girl had not talked in a very long time, I was told. So as I see the van coming into our campus, our, our homes in Haiti, I started thinking, oh my gosh, this is the first impression that I'm going to make on her. I don't want to scare her. Is she going to like me? I walked to the van and I saw this little girl who wasn't scared, or at least she wasn't acting scared. It was like, bring it on, bring it on. Nobody's going to break me. And I just thought, dadgummit, that's exactly the look I remember having when I looked at myself in the mirror when I was eight years old. Intimidated the heck out of me. I'm like, how do I deal with this little strong thing? So I picked her up out of the van and I took her, they, they took a, her chair. She had a chair, a little green chair that she always sat on in her lean-to. That was her chair and they brought it with her. So I took her and I put her in her chair and I asked her if I could hug her and no, she was not gonna be touched. She didn't want anybody touching her. I remember feeling that way too. It's like, you're not gonna get to me. Uh-uh, you're just gonna leave me anyway. So you're not getting near me. So I just got back from Haiti a few days ago and it's been a year now. She now um, has been in therapy, uh, physical therapy, mental therapy for a year. And I saw her, the first thing I saw when I went into the orphanage was Chili in her wheelchair, using her arms to push that wheelchair towards me and just took me in her arms and then pushed me away and looked at me in the face, straight on. And it was that tough, tough look. It was almost like you know she was saying to me, I got you covered. I'm going to take care of you. Just amazing. So this little girl who intimidated me so much is, I know what she's been through and I know how hard it is to love when you've been so daggum hard, but it's harder not to love. It's much harder not to love.